What up, it's Talib Kweli, you watch a spinster on YouTube. My first albums were me and Hot Sack and me and Most Deaf, and then I did a thing with Knife Wonder and with, with Styles P and with Madden. Um, I'm definitely more in, in, uh, interested in a collaboration. Um, and when I see a new artist like a like a Kanye West or a Kendrick Lamar or J. Cole or J. Electronica or artists that, that people have credit, credited me with being early on, it's not, it's not, it's a selfish thing because they make what I do look better. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I didn't bring Kanye West on the road because I was doing it for favor. I brought him on the road because he earned that spot. And because what he was doing at that time in his career, even though the world didn't know about it, I saw it. So I was like, yo, that's, he's dope. He's going to make my show better. Um, you know, when I heard Kendrick, Kendrick did my wife's radio show in the garage in the crib. And I walked by the garage. This is when he was chaos. You know what I'm saying? I heard Robin, and I'm like, I got his number. And that, that push through record was actually done like three years before it came out. But I always put out records too early. You know what I'm saying? Like I always put out records before people blew up. So Kendrick, I waited at least till Swim Pools came out. And then I dropped it, but I probably should have waited another couple of years. <laughs> it, uh, speaking to that, like it's crazy because I had to sit on a couple of records that I did, um, Shakin's Club, but still, like on the Radio Silence album, like Talib gave me a chance also, because I was doing, you know, a lot of work with SKP and S1. And you know, I was working with some other artists, but to live, like, Years, years ago, he, he sent me the record, and then you know it, it kept on developing. I think the um, the chip record, the chip record was like maybe two and a half years ago, yeah. and then you kept seeing sending me the developments of it, and walked on there. And then I remember one time when you were on the to buy his open record, it, and then one day you sent it to me and it said, you know, featuring Rick Ross, and I was like, wow, you know. And so that was about two years in the making. How did you, you send you all these good records out too early? So what is your synopsis and and I guess what is your game plan when you're creating the album? Because I remember Radio Silence, it was a it was a long time coming. So we we keep touring so much. What is your process and, and kind of like, you know, the, the time that you spend to to put these records out like in, in the interim kind of what, what is your mindset? Um well every record is different. You know, I got records like Liberation that took a week to record and put together. Radio Silence took four years, you know what I'm saying? Like Black Star took Six, seven months, Reflection Journal took like two years. You know? So it just, it's really the, the record. Um, my plan with Radio Silence was to not put out anything for a long time after. Because I do tour a lot and I put out a lot of stuff recently. I just put out the Dragon Style Speed last year. Um, I really wanted to sit down. They're most definitely out here making announcements and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, well, now you want to do a record? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, we might, we've been working on that record too. Um, um, you know, it's got to be organic. Um, I can more answer a question like that about a specific song rather than a whole album because um, each song is its own animal, its own piece. Um, and you had Jay Electronic on there, Rick. And I, I heard you in the interview speak of how that came to be. Can you kind of tell the crowd how that Jay Electronic record, that unicorn sight came about? <laughs> um, Jay Electronica, he had asked me, we have a great relationship, but um, as you know, he's not great with like putting out music. And it's hard, he's hard to get in touch with. Um, he had did the hip hop, Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival a few years ago, this was years ago. Um, he brought out Jay-Z, he brought out J. Cole, he brought me out, he brought Mac Miller out. Um, but I, I when, when he asked me to do it, I said, I'll do it on one condition. You have to give me a verse. And so he said, yeah, we're supposed to do the song that day. And we didn't do the song that day, it was too hectic. Um, and then I was chasing him for this verse for a while. But then Farrakhan had a meeting where he invited all the rappers to the meeting. And I knew Jay Electronica was going to be there. So I brought my engineer with me, and we, 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 we caught cool. Jay Electronica at, at, the, at, the, at the Farrakhan spot. And, um, I got him an Uber to the Hard Rock Hotel in downtown Chicago, and we recorded that song. I had already had left my room. It was actually the day I left for Ferguson that day. Um, and so that was like 2014. Um, and um, I had left my room already, so we, we sort of snuck into like the ballroom or conference room, and we set up the equipment and recorded that first day. Well, um, I guess, uh, thanks for doing you for your show, I guess. My last thought is, 
Well, what's next? I mean, you know, it's such a cliche question, but you know, what you going into legacy status? What's next for Tony Quali? Like, what 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 drive through moves you at moves you at at this point in your career? You know, doing events like this is very inspirational. But I didn't. When I started my career, I didn't start it for fame and accolade of fans. I started because I loved the music. And uh, that's got to be your motivation at the point where your motivation becomes like, like Quincy Jones said in that, that interview, that great interview. Um, you know, he said when he said when, when when you start doing it for money, that's when God walk out the room. You know, and so the, the, it's the, as much as I love the being able to make a living and the love that people give me, I gotta stay focused on the original reason why I did it, which was for myself. And I think all good art starts with you being honest with yourself and. The true fan, that's really what they want to see. They don't want to see you pander to fans. They want to see you just be honest to yourself. All right, y'all give it up to Leo, man. I want to ask you.